Welcome to Brilliantly British. My name is Lawrence and today I'm going to be showing you how to make Shrewsbury biscuits or as they're better known, jammy dodgers. So as I show you how to make this delicious, famous treat, please sit back, relax with a cup of tea in hand, putting your feet up to and enjoy this episode. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. This is the quaintly picturesque English town of Shrewsbury in the county of Shropshire, the origin of these fair biscuit sandwiches known as Shrewsbury biscuits, or more commonly, jammy dodgers. In today's episode, we'll be sharing our recipe for these dainty raspberry jam biscuit sandwiches just in time for your next well-deserved spot of afternoon tea. So now, with the introductions made and your interest peaking, allow me to introduce the ingredients to you. For today's Brilliantly British Jammy Dodgers, you will need some plain white flour, some juicy plump raspberries, some caster sugar, some icing sugar, ideally some homemade Brilliantly British butter. Follow the link up there to learn how to make it yourselves. And to round everything off and to avoid the occurrence of bland food, you will need a little pinch or two of salt. That's it for the making of today's Brilliantly British Jammy Dodgers. But, 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 before you get started, before you do anything at all, please switch on your kettle, brew yourself a nice cup of hot tea so that you can sip on that whilst you bake. Implied in the name of these biscuits, you will of course need some raspberry jam. So with a blender or food processor, pulverize your fruits before passing through a sieve to extract the seeds. After extracting the seeds, leaving behind a vibrantly colored raspberry smoothie, weigh the liquid, making a mental note in order to weigh an equal amount of sugar out before gradually mixing with your fruit smoothie. With that done over a medium heat, begin to cook the contents, whilst stirring constantly at first in order to dissolve the sugar. With the contents beginning to gently boil, turn the heat down to a low intensity as the contents will need to reduce and thicken gently, needing you to only stir it occasionally to prevent it from catching at the bottom of the pan. Now having spare time on your hands, in a bowl, with your fingertips or in a food processor, combine sugar, cold, diced butter, flour and a pinch of salt until fine and homogenous. With the majority of the ingredients combined, incrementally incorporate cold water in order to form a cohesive ball of dough, which you'll want to press and bring together on a well-floured work surface. After having formed a dough ball, persuade it to take the form of a cylinder, dividing it in half thereafter, optionally with the aid of a scale, before placing each half in floured containers before setting in your fridge for at least an hour to stabilise and chill thoroughly. Now, turning our attention back to the jam, the desired temperature is 105 degrees C, at which point you need only switch off your source of heat before relocating your saucepan to one side covered with a lid, allowing the jam to cool and set in preparation for the following day. After allowing the dough to sufficiently rest after rehydrating, of course, on a well-floured surface with two lined baking sheets prepared, begin with one half rolling it out to a thickness of five to seven millimeters. Then begin preheating your oven. Then whilst wielding a jammy dodger biscuit cutter, the link of which will be in the description of this episode, cut out and place your Shrewsbury biscuit tops, which should have a heart shaped hole on your baking trays, sliding them in the oven thereafter to bake perfectly. Meanwhile, bring together the remnant dough by recompacting and placing in a floured container before setting in your fridge to chill for later use. With all of this biscuit making momentum built up, recall your second half of untouched dough to roll it out to a thickness of five to seven millimeters before cutting out and stacking in a floured container, in my case, ready for baking once my trays were once more available. It was at that moment the first batch was removed from my oven and allowed to cool for five minutes before transferring to a wire rack to cool down completely. Freeing up my baking sheets on which my recently cut biscuit halves were laid before a gentle stint of baking began. Repeat the following steps, namely keeping an eye on your oven, 
prepping your next batch until all dough has been consumed, which in time should yield roughly 90 biscuits, good for the making of 45 jammy dodgers. To finish these biscuits, with the jam cool and set, simply with an unhold half in hand, pile on a teaspoon amount of jam, top with the hold half, encouraging the jam to protrude slightly through the heart-shaped hole before setting to one side to repeat with the remaining halves, yielding this handsome batch of Shrewsbury biscuits. So now, with a batch of biscuits made and a fresh cup of tea at hand, I think it's time for... Tasting, tasting, tasting. Are you ready? Are you steady? Three, two, one. Right, my childhood has just flashed vividly before my eyes. The biscuit itself just melts away on contact, especially when a sip of tea has been had. The raspberry jam is wonderfully fragrant and fruity and has the perfect sticky texture to hold this biscuit sandwich together. Oh, I could go on and on and on and Honestly, this batch of biscuits here right before me is a very dangerous thing indeed, uh, probably off camera. I'm going to devour this batch if it isn't taken away. Look, my words will not do this justice. I urge you, I implore you, I'm begging you, please get the ingredients, make a batch of Jammy Dodgers Shrewsbury biscuits because you will not regret it and your loved ones will love you even more than they do already. So please, please, please make a batch of Jammy Dodgers, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you all for allowing me to show you how to make a jammy dodgers knowing that you loved this episode please don't forget to click on the like button the subscribe button and the notification button so that you don't miss any of our new releases tell everyone you know and i mean everyone that you know about the brilliantly british food on this channel and follow us on all of the social media platforms that this channel is on and i will see you 